Greetings, everybody. Uh, this is another study on the Godhead. Godhead appears in the Bible three times, and it is uh, the enemies of the Godhead will argue and say, oh, Trinity, Trinity, a three-headed God or three gods. And um, in the Bible, Godhead appears in Acts chapter 17. It appears in Colossians, uh, let's see, Colossians chapter 2. And it appears in Romans chapter 1. So let's read the book of Acts chapter 17. You know, and then there's, uh, the, they'll, they'll deny Paul as an apostle. You know, when you deny Paul as an apostle, you have to get rid of the book of Acts. I mean, really, the book of Acts records Paul's uh, call and conversion. And then they'll say, well, oh, the whole, you know, uh, the, the apostles uh, didn't know that they had a, a false apostle among them. Really? The Holy Spirit of the Lord failed to warn the apostles that there was a fraud among them, a Satanist trying to infiltrate, because that's what they're saying. I mean, they won't come out and say that because logically you'd know that, you know, that's false. Really? So the Holy Spirit failed to tell the apostles that Christ, uh, Paul was a fake. Yeah. And that we should just throw away the book of Acts and Second Peter. I mean, when you hear people say this kind of stuff, you know that you're either talking to somebody that's extremely ignorant of the Bible or they're deceived or they're deceived. Well, and they're deceived or they are deceivers. Uh, it's just no other way around it. Now, let's go to Acts 17. Paul is spreading the good news of the gospel, Jesus, and not Yeshua HaMashiach. Now, there is a difference between Jew and Jews and the sin of of Gog of Satan there's a difference a lot of you don't know it my um, I should point this out my dad uh, worked two jobs to put my older half-sister through by a uh, nursing school registered nurse two years college it's actually a fairly decent, uh, it's a hard job, but it's a decent paying job. He worked a, a second job. He worked for a pharmacist, a Jewish pharmacist. Well, a real one. My mother had a really, really bad auto accident. I mean, <laughs> she was taken to the hospital that my sister worked at. And of course, sister was off work or either not on shift or whatever that day. And they looked at the name and they said, oh, Walker, who? I wonder if this is part of Judy's family. And they looked up the address and looked up Judy's address and they go, oh boy, this is what part of Judy, uh, Judy's family, my sister. So they called her at home and says, oh, we're shorthanded. You got to get in here. We need you. She's like, I'm off work. She's like, well, we need you in here. Get here as quick as you can. They didn't tell her her, well, they didn't know it was her mother until she went, got there. But uh, they said, you got to get here. And they didn't want to tell her so that, you know, she'd be crazy having an accident on the way there. So she gets to the hospital and they tell her, uh, and 
basically they told her your mother is she's really banged up bad bad we don't think she's going to live through the night that's how bad she was my sister said get me doctors two doctors one of them was like a, a specialist and the other one was a uh, like a mash you ever watch mash the uh, you know the army medical center thing you know hawkeye and all that he worked in vietnam he was a expert on you know this guy had more experience in the time that he was in the army doing surgeries than other people doctors their whole life i mean he just you know was an expert on surgeries matter of fact he uh, wrote in the uh, american medical journal a way to pack livers that had been almost destroyed a liver can partially regenerate itself it's one of the few organs that can partially regenerate itself so of course uh i believed back in them days i was in junior high school and um asked the lord you know spare my mom and of course uh i think he honored the prayer of a i don't know 12 13 year old kid whatever i was uh 14 i don't remember i was like a year or two too young to be in the hospital in the waiting room or whatever but uh, the hospital didn't ask too many questions since Ju sister worked there but um, the thing is my dad was working for a pharmacist and dad would tell you he was this jewish pharmacist was dad's best friend when he found out that uh his, dad's wife had had an accident my mother and that she was really bad shape he gave my dad three months of pay cash in his hand and he says i want you to go take care of your family don't worry about working here you know the guy didn't have hardly any employees i mean that was a big you know problem for him you know when you only got a couple employees psh, being missing one is you know tough but he hands my dad three months salary he says you know what he says this is a gift and he says uh if if you ever can pay me back that's great i'll you know but if you can't don't worry about it go take care of your family go now how many how many uh people do you know that are like that not many i'm telling you i mean there's not even very many christians that would do that so dad went to his funeral and cried yeah dad said that was my he, he said he was his best friend so there's a difference between being a jew and the sin of gog of you know who yeah big difference so but there's not many of them you know it's just like you go to you know comparing uh watching tbn and the 700 club and all those tv preachers and saying oh all those christians are a bunch of greedy bunch of lying devils i mean i put used car salesmen one step above uh tv preachers if that's or i should say put tv preachers one step below used car salesmen yeah this car was driven only to church on sunday by a little old lady from pasadena oh yeah so that's my uh that's my story so let's read act 17 about the godhead see people that deny the godhead well they'll call it the trinity their whole purpose is to trick you into believing that jesus was just a mere man oh he was a good teacher or he was a prophet or you know but he was not god in the flesh well the bible teaches that sin when adam and eve sinned that sinned sin passed upon all flesh 
Let's take a look at that. Uh, that is found in Romans 5, 12. Wherefore, as by one man, Adam, right? Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. You know, this is the thing. Sin is genetic. Sin is genetic. And if Jesus was not God in the flesh, then he's just another man that sin, has sin. And the Bible teaches that Jesus had no sin. Now, who but God has no sin? Who? In Hebrews 4.15, For we have not an high priest, which is Christ, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Now, if Jesus Christ was not God in the flesh, he has sin. But the Bible teaches he has no sin. He has to be God. There's no other way around it. Unless, of course, you want to join the Jehovah's Witnesses or, you know, the Mormons or, uh, you know, somebody like that. All right, so let's go to Acts 17. Paul. Now, when they had passed through Amphi, Paulus and Apollo, Apollonia. Uh, here it is. They named a uh, city after Apollo, you know, a Greco Roman god. Well, a Greek god, right? They came to Thessalonica. Well, that's, you know, you ever heard of the book of Thessalonians? Well, that's what, you know, Thessalonica. If you were living in Thessalonica, you were a Thessalonian. You know, just like uh, if you live in New York, you're a New Yorker. Uh, they came to Thessalonica where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Now, I'm not sure if that means on three days... That was a Sabbath. Paul reasoned with them out of the scriptures, or when it says three Sabbath days, is that three weeks? I'm not 100% sure on that. So, you know, was it just every Sabbath day for three in a row that he reasoned with them, or did he, was it three weeks? You know, three Sabbath days. He reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. People, that's the gospel right there. That Christ suffered, rose from the dead. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the gospel. He took our sins upon him on the cross. Verse 4. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. Huh. Verse 5. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, you ever heard of a somebody that's lewd? Yeah. People in the pornography industry are lewd. And of the baser sort. Uh, you know, you're talking about people of low class. And they gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These 
that have turned the world upside down or come hither also. You see, they were crying that they had turned the world upside down. The Christians, Paul, they turned the world upside down. Where is the church today that turns the world upside down? Where? Whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying, There is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason, and of the other, they let them go. So I guess they, you know, posted bond. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea. Now remember, the Bereans were uh, more noble because they searched the scriptures. All right, so verse 10, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who, coming thither, went into the synagogue of the Jews, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Wherefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea, but Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Now, Athens was a major city in Greece, very major city. I mean, they were, uh, you know, they were like up there with Sparta and stuff. They're, they were, uh, I think Athens, uh, their navy was the one that defeated the Persians uh, in some battle, I forget. It I forget now, but they uh, they had a small fleet against the Persians' huge fleet, but they boxed them into this little, uh, like a cove, and just tore them to pieces. Consider, I, you know, God's hand was in on that, I think, therefore. So. so, now while Paul waited for them at Athens, the spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. Now the Epicureans were uh, people that were into living life to the fullest. They liked luxury and, you know, the best of things. Uh, if you were an Epicurean uh they would use that like if you were eating a luxurious dinner, you know, all the best. But the Stoics were the opposite. Now, those of you that are Star Trek fans, uh, the Stoics would have been like the Vulcans. They, uh, they wouldn't let their emotions get in the way. It was all logic. You know, they would deny themselves uh, pleasures. And they were just basically, they try to just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Let me see. Let me, let me get this. All right. The Epicureans. Uh, luxurious, given a luxury, contributing to the luxuries of the table. You know, eating well. Living well is the best revenge. Stoic. A porch in Athens where the philosopher Zeno taught. Uh, he taught that men should be free from passion, unmoved by joy or grief, and submit without complaint to the unavoidable 
necessity by which all things are governed. You know, logic, no emotion. So, the, you know, here it is. You've got two different, uh, different things. So verse 18, then certain, so Paul goes here, verse 18, then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, what will this babbler say? Other, other some, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Areophagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine thereof thou speakest is? For thou bringest strange, certain strange things to our ear. We would know therefore what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. So they like to tell stories, you know, something new. Verse 22, then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill. Mars was a Greek god, and they named a planet after him in his honor. Isn't that funny? Who, who named all these planets after Greek gods? Not me. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hills and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. I think in the NIV it says, uh, you guys are too religious. You know, there's a difference between being religious and superstitious. A religious person might not worry about a black cat crossing their trail or walking under a ladder, which, well, that's not superstition. That's just common sense because the guy painting might drop a, you know, or a carpenter might drop a hammer on your head, skull, you know. But he says, I think you guys are too superstitious. Verse 23. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with the inscription, To the unknown God. Ah, Paul's going to preach to them about the unknown God. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. To the unknown God, whom ye ignorantly worship, him I declare unto you. God that made the world and all things therein. You know, the Bible teaches that Jesus created all things. The Bible says that God created all things. Do the math. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. I learned that in college. You know, yeah. I, I didn't need to go to college to learn that, but uh, simple algebra. If all things are equal, then, you know, if God created all things and Jesus created all things, that means Jesus is God. Verse 24, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life, breath, and all things. And hath made of one blood all nations of men. And when you look at that, that has reference to the word Adam. Adam's a racial description. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. And hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said. For we also are his offspring. We're his children, people. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead, the Godhead, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold 
or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. We're talking about idols here. Verse 30. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commanded that all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, wherefore he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when he heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again on this matter. So Paul departed from among them. Howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed, among the which was Dionysius the Areophagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. So there you go. Uh, Acts chapter 17. And I'm going to cut this short. This is uh, one place in the three places where the Godhead is mentioned. And what is the Godhead? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You know? There you go. All right. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.